Well, in this week's Cardiology Countdown, we'll talk about troponins and heart failure, the risk of MI following hip and knee replacement surgery, and the use of CT angiography in the emergency department to rule out acute coronary syndromes. So the first pick is a uh, look from the uh, European and International uh, Universal MI definition group at the issue of troponin elevation and heart failure. This has been a vexing problem for all of us where we see lots of patients with elevated troponins, only some of which are actually acute MI. And so as part of the universal definition of MI, they set up a section on uh, troponins in heart failure and just published in the European Heart Journal is that uh, group's report. They point out that uh, elevations of troponin are very common and are very clearly linked to adverse prognosis. And so as such, they can be recommended for use in prognostication of patients with both chronic and uh, acute heart failure. Now, they dig into the mechanisms and point out that uh, some patients with heart failure may be having an acute MI, obviously, and so you have to use them to exclude an acute MI looking for the typical rise and fall. But there are many non-coronary related elevations, such as apoptosis, uh, simply increased wall stress from uh, high filling pressures and then demand uh, ischemia. Um, also, the toxic effects of circulating neurohormones uh, and other effects like inflammation uh, may be operative as ways that there are troponin elevations. They lay out some recommendations and mostly say that you have to use troponins in the clinical setting that they are drawn and the, and the patient's clinical presentation. Next up is a uh, look from um, the Archives of Internal Medicine at the risk of acute MI following total knee and hip surgery replacement. Um, here they looked in the Danish registry at just about 100,000 patients matching uh, three to one to control patients and found about a 25 to 30 fold increase in the risk of acute MI in the first two weeks following either hip or knee replacement uh, surgery. For hip replacement, the following two weeks to six weeks post-op also had about a five-fold higher risk, whereas that was not seen following knee surgery. And so they point out that uh, this is a very high-risk period and risk stratification should be considered uh, in that period. And of course, I think operatively that has to be before surgery to do careful risk uh, assessment. Um, it's a, a useful reminder that this is a, uh, a very high-risk uh, surgical procedure and one where we need to be careful for our cardiac patients. The top pick is the publication of the Romicat 2 trial. This was a study of 1,000 patients and a randomized multicenter trial looking at the use of CT angiography to rule out an acute coronary syndrome as compared with the more standard uh, stress testing often with nuclear imaging. This study found a faster uh, triage of patients and, and much more frequent discharge of patients straight from the emergency department in patients where the CT angiography uh, was used with rate of 47% uh, of people going home straight from the emergency department versus 12 in the standard testing group. They did find that there was more downstream testing following the CT angiogram, and so the overall costs ended up being similar. Um, but this opens the door, I think, to a new strategy of using CT angiography more commonly than, than at present as a way to rapidly triage patients uh, in the emergency department presenting with chest pain. So for this week's Cardiology Countdown, I'm Chris Cannon.